So hello, um, some repetition maybe to compare compared to people who were in the workshop uh, yesterday because it, it was a last minute workshop. Sorry, but for the others, I will present a bit uh, MediaConch and uh, MediaInfo, also the, the new features um, in both products. Uh, I present both together because they are linked together and one is more um, focused on the reporting and one is more focused on the implementation and policy checker. So um, uh, the goal of MediaConch is to be an implementation checker and policy checker. The difference between implementation and policy is implementation we compare to the specification. So it is not you, it is compared to the standards. And the policy checker, it is a, uh, something you create, uh, the limitation compared to the standard, what you accept or don't accept in your repository. And uh, inside MediaConch, there is a reporting part, it is MediaInfo. MediaConch is based on MediaInfo, so any format supported by MediaInfo is available for the policy checker. For the implementation checker, it is a bit different. Um, because uh, MediaConch um, started uh, in 2015 with uh, some European Union funding and it was initially uh, focused on open source formats, so Matroska, and v one and PCM. So for the implementation checker, it is a long process, it is a big thing to do, we need to select a couple of uh, formats we focus on. So currently, um, MediaConch supports uh, the implementation checker mostly for Matroska and FFV1 plus some PCM con um, test. Uh, we want to expand it, um, but yeah, we need. Uh, we are looking for sponsorship for expanding uh, it. For the policy checker, it is more. E uh, it is easier because we just need to rely on media info, the analysis for the, this kind of policy checker, seeing how the count of um, channels, the frame rate, and so on. It is easier, so we don't need uh, so much sponsorship for implementing that in MediaConch. Um, for some his history, the name of the European Union funding for that it was Preforma, and Preforma was f focusing on for the video on Matroska and um, FFV1, but there was other companies selected for PDF and TIFF conformance shaker. And Preforma was also the start of the IETF working group we just talked uh, a few minutes ago. And uh, it was also uh, the start of No Time to Wait conferences. So uh, the Preforma project sponsored uh, No Time to Wait 1 and 2, if I remember well. And then uh, other sponsors uh, decided to keep going. The Preforma project stopped. And we, are, we still have some No Time to Wait events because uh, archives de decided that it is worth it to sponsor, to sponsor the, the No Time to Wait conference. So this year in the MediaConch, uh, we have uh, different new features. Uh, in the past, it was only uh, error or pass. Now we have some different level of logging, like warning on, uh, or information. It is used, for example, that uh, people want to warn the operator that uh, um, a policy is acceptable today, but uh, next year it will not be acceptable. So uh, there, is, there will be a, a limitation. So it is not an error for the policy of the, the entity now, but there, there is already a warning which will become maybe an error in the next policy next year. We also have a, a full online version of MediaConch now, so we don't need to, to be on the desktop. We can just launch um, a JavaScript version. It is used by some entities to, uh, to check before an upload by internet uh, that the file is conforming to some specifications of some policies uh, from the entity. Uh, we also have a better support of uh, several audio tracks at the beginning, uh, archives were interested only uh, by one video and audio, by and one audio because it, it was the, um, the classic usage. Uh, but some other users were interested uh, in different um, files with more audio tracks. We have also now um, um, a USAC uh, implementation shaker. It was sponsored by Fraunhofer, who was interested to 
to have um, a conformance checker for, for everyone, so not only uh, in tools like Baton and so on. So anyone uh, developing a new Zach encoder can check uh, with MediaConch that the, the file is conform to the specification. Uh, for some uh, people interested to, to have a quick check in their repository, we've also added a, a par an option for parsing only the header of the file. So we cannot test everything in the video stream, for example, but some people just need to, to know that it is an MP4 with FAV1, for example, and we scan quickly uh, all the repository for seeing if uh, the repository contains only that or, or some other things. Um, we also uh, added a lot of different features in media info only. For, uh, I will do a focus on the MPEG-7 output, for example. Uh, it is only in media info. It is an export, so it is only reporting. Um, we, uh, we, we have for a long time um, uh, MPEG-7 output, so not uh, the classic media info output, but uh, also uh, the possibility to export to other um, at, um, over format, uh, output format. MPEG set is a way to, to present different metadata. So, uh, for the needs of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, the French National Library, we developed uh, an extension of uh, MPEG 7 because MPEG 7 is from ISO and it is a bit frozen. There is no more any working group uh, expanding it. Expanding it uh, but we have new format, so and we need uh, we have new needs, and um, in that case, when the form, uh, the standard is frozen, we need to to decide if we leave this format, but for which one, or we just decide to expand it. So we added some different modes, relaxed and extended, and these modes are not standard; they are not the standard, but they fill a need. So the relaxing mode is. If um, it is not so important, uh, we, the feature is not so important, we try to be uh, standard. Um, but if there is, for example, two audio tracks, it is not compatible with MPEG-7 output, so we add another track, it is no more compatible. But So it is an extension of uh, MPEG-7 supporting two, two audio tracks or one caption track, for example. Um, we need to to display captions now, today, and it is not in MPEG-7, so we just extend it. So we, we try to keep the, the way it is defined in MPEG-7, but with our extension. We add also a a new audio presentation uh, IDs, so we have new format, and it is not listed in MPEG-7, so we add uh, new names and so new terms IDs. We also add more public identifiers and so on. So when there is a need, we, are, we try to be uh, compatible with other standards, but sometimes we need to extend it, and we do it without problem. <coughs> we also added um, ISO support, uh, currently focused on DVD video. Uh, it was also sponsored by a Bibliothèque Nationale de France and with some help of a New York Public Library. We also added new HD, HDR format, so it is more modern. We have a uh, new HDR format from SMBT or from uh, China. HDR Vivid, for example, is uh, the Chinese version of HDR. We, um, the world is still uh, not able to agree on one format, so we need to support uh, an over format. We, we, we did a, a focus on the time code in Matroska, so with, for the Library of Congress, but also in AVC and HEVC, there is some time codes. It is not supported in FFmpeg, for example, but we support uh, in Media Info. Um, as I said previously, we can extract all time code from a file in XML format. Um, we support very weird files. I, I will do uh, some discourse uh, about aptx100. It is a very technical name, and it is actually some cinema details. It is something we didn't implement in MediaInfo. Um, we are the main developer of MediaInfo, but anyone interested in developing a format uh, can do it. So one day, there was uh, a guy who sent a, public, um, um, a push request, 
and saying that uh, there is this kind of format, cinema details. I was not aware that uh, there is a couple of CDs uh, in cinema uh, with DTS, but it is not the classic DTS stream you, you get uh, usually. There is maybe a couple of hundreds of movies with this um, CD, with DTS CD. And we, are, um, we have no budget for developing that, but when fan, uh, a fan community is interested about that, they can provide the kind of uh, support and implement themselves. And uh, for us, it was very uh, surprising to see that there is different commercial names, like these ones, and um, it is actually technically the same, and the very small differences, um, and uh, with, uh, without being a fan, we, we are not able to, to know the difference. Because with DTS, this, uh, in the past it was maybe 20 or 30, uh, 20 years ago, uh, the way to detect uh, the commercial name is a bit crazy. It is, um, so here we have, for example, the channel count in the file, and actually we need to, to see um, how it is exactly. If there is a, a channel count of two, actually it is four because it is, there is some matrix uh, channels. But also, uh, if a value is five, we need to check the serial number of the file, in the, uh, written in the file. Because sometimes there is a matrix uh, over channels, sometimes there is not, and sometimes it is linked to uh, DTS 70 millimeter, sometimes for a link to um, uh, 35 millimeter uh, movies, and the only way to, to know that the commercial, what is the commercial name or what is exactly uh, inside the, the content is to check the serial number. And without being a fan, it is difficult to know that. And so, yeah, we we are not we don't have the resources to do that. But when you have a, a fan community uh, who is passionate about that, they they try to get any CD and uh, they want to to have a good metadata about that, and they send um, a patch for that. So it is not just us. It is you. If you know, if you have a knowledge about the format, you can develop also yourself a media info patch and send to it. We merge it in our source. Um, we added also uh, in media info uh, more features about. Um, uh, N19, STL, and WebVTT. We also support some uh, very modern 3D audio in MXF, so uh, SADM. So this is different development with format from the past or very new format. We, we, support, we can support any uh, file format, modern or past. But Medianfo is not only about software. We, we need also to have some documentation. So for us, it is difficult to maintain the documentation um, because usually sponsors want a feature only, and um, they, we try to be as cheap as possible. So we al always say that the documentation is optional. But if you need documentation, we can also do it. So. Uh, Bibliothèque National de France wanted um, more, uh, more information about the media info fields. So now we have a version, uh, we have um, a support page listing all the media info fields and with a, a small description of each field. So it may help you to understand what is the meaning of each field. And we have also a mapping to the MPEG set output or the EBU core output of the BBU core output, not only the media info output. So if you want to see the mapping between different uh, output formats, you go uh, on the media info um, uh, web page and there is a, in the support there is this, um, um, this kind of information now. Um, for next year, we have some commitment for some sponsorship. Uh, for expanding MediaConch for the comparison opera uh, operation between properties. Currently, we can just check oh, is the channel count of, of the specific track is two, for example, but we cannot compare the channel count between two, um, two tracks. Uh, we will be able to, to have that next year. We also uh, 
are implementing uh, ADM, audio data model. It is another audio form, 3D audio um, format. And um, uh, there will be a full implementation shaker because there is a sponsor uh, interested in that. We are also working a bit on MXF, um, uh, an MXF implementation shaker. Um, we don't have a big s a sponsorship for that, so it is only partial on some specific uh, value, um, uh, which are a big interest for a sponsor. Um, we also work on uh, the time code discontinuities in MXF and, Matro and Matroska in order to be able to see where are the, uh, the time code discontinuities in the file. We also plan to uh, to pass the VBI um, uh, in MXF. So usually in most tools like FFmpeg and so on, the VBI is just opaque data, so it is not passed. So uh, and in media info, uh, we will catch the VATC uh, time codes and the line 21 captions in order to show in media info that it is present. So this is the kind of development we are uh, working on, but actually it is done because we have some sponsorship. So actually, uh, what is the future of media conch and media info? It depends on you. It depends on, on your needs. So just say what are your needs and we can see what we can do for that. And um, we are not the only developer. If you want to develop, just send a patch. It is also possible. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zero. So, any questions? I have a question. Um, what, so about perhaps very general question, what is your, how do you generally work with sponsors? Is it always for specific, like the implementation of specific um, new features no. or? Um, our business model is based on, uh, on what is already developed is usually uh, free of charge. It is open source, you can download and you can use it. And uh, what we sell is some work uh, hours of work. So it is development of new, new features. Um, and uh, we, um, sp potential sponsors contact us saying, oh, I need that. Can you do that? Yes, we, we, sometimes we can do that in, in Media Info or in Media, uh, uh, or sometimes in FFmpeg. Sometimes we, we say, okay, it is not uh, the goal of Media Info. We can uh, adapt another tool or we can create a new tool if it is a spe very specific need. Um, we usually, yes, we, we, we sell the new features. So you are interested in a new feature, we, the, we find a way to develop it. Um, we can also sell sometimes uh, some maintenance contracts if you need um, bug fixes uh, with um, a service level agreement. We, we, we sell a service level agreement also. So it is a more classic maintenance contract, but it, it is more rare. In the open source world, usually people don't care about the service level agreement. So some people want it, we do it too, but usually it is just paying for a feature. Any other questions? Uh, in the one workshop we did, we talked about uh, the, the case that um, we often have MP4 files, and uh, we thought that we talked that um, maybe we could uh, sponsor uh, like an error detection of corrupted files, just limited to MP4, AAC, H264. Um, and I wanted to, um, maybe other institutions would be interested, so um, yeah, maybe we could mm. get together for a sponsorship. Mm. But it is possible to share a sponsorship, for example, for the ISO support, the main sponsors was, was the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, but there was also a partial uh, support, uh, sponsorship from New York Public Library. So we, we, we try to find a way uh, to, uh, to, to invoice different uh, entities uh, for some feature when people are, uh, when different entities want to sponsor the same feature. So if you are interested in uh, MP4 implementation shaker, so detecting in any error in uh, MP4, 
raise your hand and we talk together how we can uh, find a way to have a common sponsorship. So I, I know, yes, you, you are interested, but maybe it will be too expensive for only one entity. So if other entities are interested in that, just uh, get in touch and we see how we, we can have a common sponsorship. If there are no more questions, then thank you, Sharon. <laughs>